Hello everyone. Welcome back to the online tutorial class. I hope you all are doing well. This is Indrani Roy, your English teacher from Asian International School and today I am back with part 2 of the text A New House by Neil Gaiman. So without any further delay, let's get started. Now children, let's begin with our class today. So today we will read about A New House by Neil Gaiman. This video is part 2 of the lesson. So in the previous video, children, we have learned that our protagonist, Coraline Jones, moves to a new house with her parents. She also meets her neighbors, Miss Pink, Miss Forcible and an old strange man who used to live on the large house which is now divided into flats. Coraline Jones with her parents used to live on the main floor of that building. Now, Coraline after moving to that new house used to spend her days by exploring the house and the garden and the ground beside it. While exploring the house, she comes across various animals, children. And among them, there was a black cat who watches her continuously. And when she uh, runs to catch it, the cat further runs away. Now, Coraline used to spend her days by exploring the surroundings. This used to be her work. But one day it started raining heavily and Coraline was stuck inside her house. She was feeling bored because she had nothing to do. She cannot go to explore because it was raining. She goes to her mother and asks her, Mother, what should I do? And she replies that you can watch a movie, read books or you can talk and uh, uh, trouble your neighbors that is Miss Pink, Miss Forcible and the old strange man. But Coraline does not like that idea. So she went to her father and her father asks her to explore the house. Now children, we have stopped until this in our previous lesson. So now, her father will give her a pen and a paper and she will start exploring the house. Let's move on to the next part of the text. Children, after getting permission from her father, she, uh, she further asks, Can I go into the drawing room? The drawing room was where the Jones kept the expensive and uncomfortable furniture Coraline's grandmother had left them when she died. Coraline was not allowed in there. Nobody went in there. It was only for the best. So children, the drawing room of the Jones family comprises of the expensive and the uh, old uncomfortable furnitures of Coraline's grandmother who is no more. Okay, so they take the parents, uh, uh, Coraline's father and mother, they take extra care that Coraline does not touch them. If you don't make a mess and you don't touch anything, so her father replies. Coraline considered this carefully. Then she took the paper and pen and went off to explore the inside of the flat. 
Now we will see what she explores. She discovered the hot water tank. It was in a cupboard in the kitchen. She counted everything blue. She counted the windows. She counted the doors. Of the doors that she found, 13 opened and closed. The other, the big carved brown wooden door at the far corner of the drawing room was locked. So now children, Coraline has finally discovered that locked door. She said to her mother, where does that door go? Nowhere dear, it has to go somewhere. Her mother shook her head. Look, she told Coraline. She reached up and took a string of keys from the top of the kitchen door frame. She sorted through them carefully. That is, she looked all the keys, okay, and selected the oldest, biggest, blackest, rustiest key. They went into the drawing room. She unlocked the door with the key. So finally, Coraline's mother unlocked the door with the biggest, oldest, blackest, rustiest key. Okay? The door swung open. Her mother was right. The door did not go anywhere. It opened onto a brick wall. So when her mother opened the door, what did she found? find? She found that uh, behind the locked door, there was a brick wall. When this place was just one house, said Coraline's mother, that door went somewhere. When they turned the house into flats, they simply bricked it up. So I have already informed you children that this house in which they are living right now, this house used to be one uh, large house, one single large house. But now this house is divided into various flats. So that's why they have uh, bricked this door up. The other side is the empty flat on the other side of the house. The one that's still for sale. So behind the bricked wall, children, there is another flat which is still empty and that is for sale. Okay. She shut the door and put the string of keys back on top of the kitchen door frame. You didn't lock it, said Coraline. Her mother shrugged. Why should I lock it? She say, asked. It doesn't go anywhere. Coraline did not say anything. It was nearly dark outside now and the rain was still coming down pattering against the windows and blurring the lights of the cars in the street outside. So, children, it is still raining. Okay? It is still raining. Coraline's father stopped working and made them all dinner. Coraline was disgusted. So, that night, who prepared the dinner, children? Coraline's father prepared the dinner. And Coraline did not like this idea. Fine. She was very disgusted, irritated, angry. Daddy, she said, you have made a recipe again. It's leek and potato stew with a tarragon garnish and melted gruyere cheese, he admitted. Coraline shied. Then she went to the freezer and got out some microwave chips and a microwave mini pizza. So Coraline did not like the recipe that was cooked by her father, children. Okay. So what she decided? She decided that no, I'll not have this dinner. And she went to the freezer and took out some chips and a, bike, uh, and a pizza. Okay. You know, I don't like recipes. She told her father while her dinner went around and around and the little red numbers on the microwave oven counted down to zero. Okay, so she was 
heating up the food in the microwave oven. If you tried it, maybe you would like it, said Coraline's father. But she shook her head. So Coraline's father was trying to persuade her to have the food, have the food that, she, that he has made. But Coraline was determined not to have it. That night, Coraline lay awake in the bed. The rain had stopped and she was almost asleep when something went. She sat up in bed. So that night, uh, Coraline lay awake in her bed, okay? And the rain has already stopped and she could sense that something uh, passed by her. Something went creak. Coraline got out of bed and looked down the hall, but saw nothing strange. She walked down the hall. From her parents' bedroom came a low snoring. That was her father and an occasional sleeping mutter. That was her mother. So when Coraline was passing by her parents' bedroom, she could hear a low snoring, which was her father, and a sleeping mutter. Mutter means children to speak, uh, to, uh, yes, to speak in a very low voice, very soft voice, to speak, you know, to oneself. Coraline wondered if she had dreamed it, whatever it was. Something moved. It was little more than a shadow and it scuttled down the darkened hall fast like a little patch of night. So I told you children while explaining the summary to you in part one of the video that she would also see a shadow that will pass by her. So now she can sense that uh, there is a shadow which, ha which is uh, uh, which scuttled down the hall. She hoped it wasn't a spider. Spiders made Coraline intensely uncomfortable. So she was afraid of spiders, children. Now, the black shape went into the drawing room and Coraline followed it a little nervously. The room was dark. The only light came from the hall and Coraline, who was standing in the doorway, cast a huge and distorted shadow onto the drawing room carpet. She looked like a thin, giant woman. So children, the lights in the drawing room was off. There was no light in the drawing room. And that's why when Coraline uh, came uh, to the drawing room, she can see the shadow of her own and it looked huge and distorted. Okay, it looked like a thin and giant woman. The shadow was giant, was very terrifying. Coraline was just wondering whether or not she ought to turn on the lights when uh, she saw the black shape age slowly out from beneath the sofa. So Coraline was thinking to herself that whether she should turn on the lights because she can see the black shape slowly moving beneath the sofa. It paused and then dashed silently across the carpet toward the farthest corner of the room. And the shadow moved uh, towards the farthest corner of the room. Okay? There was no furniture in that corner of the room. Coraline turned on the light. There was nothing in the corner. Nothing but the old door that opened onto the brick wall. So, children, Coraline saw that the shadow is moving towards the farthest corner of the room. And there was no furniture there. Now, when uh, uh, she saw this, she turned on the light. And she found that there was nothing except the locked door. She was sure 
that her mother had shut the door, but now it was ever so slightly open. So Coraline believed that her mother has already shut the door. Okay, but now it was ever so slightly open, but now she can see that it was not locked and the door is slightly open. Okay, just a crack. Coraline went over to it and looked in. So, she can also hear a sound, a crack. And she immediately went and looked into it. There was nothing there, just a wall built of red bricks. So, she immediately opened the door when she uh, heard the sound. And what was there, children? There was a wall made of red bricks. Coraline closed the door, old wooden door, turned out the light and went to bed. She dreamed of black shapes that slid from place to place, avoiding the light until they were all gathered together under the moon. So after going to bed, she is dreaming of black shapes, monsters maybe that slid from place to place. That means that is moving from one place to another, avoiding the light until they were all to gathered together un under the moon. Little black shapes with little red eyes and sharp yellow teeth. They started to sing. We are small, but we are many. We are many, we are small. We were here before you rose. We will be here when you fall. Their voices were high and whispering and slightly whinny. They made Coraline feel uncomfortable. So, she was dreaming about these dark shapes who were singing to her. We are small but we are many. We are many, we are small. We were here before you rose. We will be here when you fall. Then Coraline dreamt a few commercials and after that she dreamt of nothing at all. So the lesson ends here children. So what do we dream children? We generally dream whatever we think within ourselves. So Coraline was continuously thinking of those black shapes, of that mysterious door. Okay, so this uh, uncanny feeling, this airy feeling, this uh, haunted feeling was already within herself. So that's why she dreamt of all these things. See, at last she also dreamt about some commercials. That means she has watched the TV. She was watching the TV when uh, there was uh, nothing, the, when it was raining and she did not have any um, option, okay, uh, to stay inside and to see the television. She was watching those uh, men in uh, suits talking about stock markets. So at that time, she saw some commercials which also came in her dream. Okay, children? So this is the lesson. Your lesson is ending here. So now let's revise the points that we have discussed in the text. Let's revise. So children, today we learned that after getting permission from her father, Coraline starts exploring the house. She counts the number of doors and the windows. She also lists the items that is in blue and also finds the water heater. Then, while exploring, she found a locked door. She immediately called her mother and both of them, with the help of the rustiest key, opens the door, only to find a brick wall. Then, on that evening, her father made the dinner, but she did not like it. So, instead, see, she had chips and pizza. Later on, while she uh, lay on her bed, she, can, uh, she heard a sound 
and followed it only to find the brick wall again. So, with this, we complete our lesson, A New House by Neil Gaiman Children. I hope you have understood the lesson thoroughly. In the next video, I will again come up with an entirely new lesson. Till then, take care. Bye.